the well-being of the community you live in and in those who dream big. Until those dreams become a reality, any bank can give you a loan or open an account. At IMCU, we care about more than just dollars and cents. We care about doing things that make sense. And investing in you makes good sense to us. Marion Knights put up 15 runs in game one on a beautiful Saturday afternoon here in West Indianapolis. Getting ready to face the Goshen Maple Leafs in game two of a four game conference series. Taking the circle for Goshen in game two, Cameron Barros, an eight and one win loss record. 42.2 innings pitch, an impressive 1.97 ERA. She's racked up 30 strikeouts along the way as well. Well, the Knights dodge a bullet there. They get out of the inning without giving up a run. And unfortunately for Coach Wagner and uh, his staff, they look up and who's the batter but Harwiger. And all she does is hit bombs and <laughs> slap bunts into, into for base hits. Can quite literally put it anywhere on the field. Yep. Harwiger came into game one batting 509, and Jim did the math. It's definitely over 509. Coming into game two, she had a three run blast back in the fourth inning to go along with a single, racked up the RBIs for this Marion Knights team in her fifth year. Yeah, again, you, you have to ask yourself, how do we get her out? You know, you, there's got to be a weak spot, there's got to be, you know, some place where we can pitch her, but unfortunately, no one in the conference has figured it out yet. Only 11 strikeouts for Harweger this year. As Barros catches a quarter. It's a good pitch. Harweger probably didn't like it, but you know, again, that's just, you gotta adjust to a new umpire here. We've flipped. The plate umpire in the first game is now on the bases and vice versa. And that's a good example right there. If you saw that pitch was up and out of the zone, a lot of, Impatient hitters would have offered at that. But Harwiger has fantastic vision and a great command of the strike zone. She knows where it is. Able to stay alive. Chops one foul. We mentioned in the first game. Harwiger set the program record for career base hits. She has over 350 in her career. She added to that in game one. And she's on a path, I guess, to take over the all time walks, which again goes back to her. You know, plate selection there. And, you know, I, I, I'm not kidding when I say this. I really wonder what her eyesight is because I bet it's, it's you know, like 2010 or something where she sees it uh, at 20 feet while the rest of us have to be at 10 feet. Well, Barrows joins a select few club of people who have struck out Harwegger this year. Yeah, it's almost as if, you know, she got fooled on this pitcher. You're going to see just a really weak swing. Um Trying to slap it into play, so hats off to Barrows for getting a very dangerous hitter off the base pass. Goshen avoids Harweger, but now we'll have to face Knox. Burke Knox, batting 278, heading into game one. Chops one foul. 0 for 2, excuse me, 0 for 3 in game one. You hear Coach Fleming there, you might have heard him on our field mic say, you got to keep your head on it, you got to keep your head on it, you got to see the ball, track the ball from the pitcher's hand to your bat. And I will tell you again, it's been a long time ago, when I, when I played, I never ever saw the ball actually hit the bat, but that is the goal. The goal is to watch it all the way in until it hits the bat, and that's when you make solid contact. And that's solid contact right there, Brooke Knox. Last one up the middle for a base hit. And I'm going to guess that Coach Fleming probably just saw a little bit of a head movement there. You're going to see the replay. Stays back, goes down and gets it. Ball just low in the zone, but just absolutely rockets it out to center field. But he saw something different in her swing, and, and so he makes the connection or makes the correction, and she's smart enough to listen to her coaches and say, you know what, okay, all right, I know what he's saying. You don't have time to coach the whole thing. You have to come up with little two- or three-word phrases. But here, chopper up the middle. Barrows couldn't get a glove on it. Back-to-back -back singles for the Knights. And this is how the Knights did a lot of their damage in game one, was just base-to-base, single-to-single. You're going to, again, 
Good contact, pitch on the outer half. She took it right up the middle. You don't you either want to go right up through the circle with that or take it the other way. You don't want to pull it. If you pull it, you're going to hit a weak ground ball to the shortstop. Probably double yourself off. Sierra Norman now up for Marion. Two big innings for the Knights last game. Scored four runs in the second inning and then pleaded 11 in the fourth inning. It was enough to end it in five to run real Goshen in game one. Going game to third base and playing right on the line. I mean, almost on the bag. Where if she fields it, all she's got to do is step on third and throw across. Ball gets away off the glove of the catcher. Both runners are going to advance. So two in scoring position for Norman. One away. Yeah, again, that, that one's a tough one. That could be a wild pitch, but then if you look at it again, maybe you think the catcher could have at least got a glove on it. I'll go ahead and score it a wild pitch for now. 3-0 the count to Norman. She'll look at a strike. And again, you could hear Coach Fleming say, all right, go ahead, it's yours, meaning, you know what, it, the at bat is yours again. He took the bat out of her hands, told her to take, but now it's yours again. Hitters count for Norman. Fouls on back. You know, every now and then, Kels, I miss coaching, and then I go sit down and think for about 10 seconds, and, <laughs> <laughs> and the thought goes away. I had my shot. It's time for young people with a lot of energy. 3-2 count. Norman goes down swinging. Nice battle back from Barros. Two way for the Knights. Yeah, two strikeouts in the inning for Barrows. Nice job. Norman had a 3 0 count. Barrows had to battle that one back. Of course, no rest for the weary here as Grace Meyer comes into the, to the series batting 395. And Grace Meyer in the DP position. She caught in game one. Nice off speed, paints a corner. Yeah, I like the fact that she A, changed speeds, but B, found the spot where, you know, again, that's a tough pitch to hit. You don't really necessarily want to offer out. You have to now with two strikes. Over the head of the catcher, coming home and scoring the first run of the game. That was Brooke Knox sliding into home. Knights go up 1-0 over Goshen. Well, that was 100% a wild pitch. I'm not sure that... Uh, Miles Turner could have gotten that one. <laughs> Big swing and a miss. Third strikeout of the inning for Barrows, but not before Marion sneaks in a run. They score off a wild pitch, and the Knights take a 1-0 lead after the first. Does your school offer high quality education? Does it offer virtual or hybrid options? Marion University Preparatory School educates students in a safe, faith-based environment focused on college and career exploration. Here at Marion University Preparatory School, we empower parents and help students to master what they love and learn as they live. We are now enrolling students in grades six through nine this fall. Full financial aid packages are still available. Act now to make MU Prep your school for 2022. Indiana teams going head to head in a conference matchup this afternoon. 1 0 lead for Marion. Chopper over to second base. 1 away. Goshen located just about two and a half hours straight north of Marion here in Indianapolis. Nice job of Knox here, just waiting on that kind of big hop. And then once you get it, real good job of just fielding it and literally just putting the ball. Right behind your ear, you don't have to, you don't need to fully extend. You're at second base, it's a short throw. Just put it behind your ear and flip it over. Nice job. 
This brings up Bianca Diamond. Diamond 0 for 2 in the first game, but finds herself in a good hitter's count at 2 0. And you heard the umpire, despite calling a strike, an illegal pitch was called. So it's now a 3 0 count you know, for I Bianca Diamond. Yeah, I didn't hear that. Good ears. You young kids, you still have all your faculties. I, I haven't heard anything all day. <laughs> Well, it doesn't help. We got some big headphones on. Yeah. Well, I drove halfway here with my, with my uh, turn signal on, so <laughs> <laughs> like a typical 60-year-old guy. People, I'm sure, were looking at me like, hey, old man, are you getting over in the other lane or not? And I was like, what? What are you saying, dear? <laughs> <laughs> well, Scott Fleming taking the mound. Talk a little bit about, looks like the step back that yeah. Macy Cohn had. Yeah, and, and, you know, that's one of the few times that a coach will actually allow, like, an umpire to coach basically say something to one of his players. A lot of times coaches will be like, hey, don't talk to my kids, right? But that time, look, if you're going to call an illegal pitch, well, then at least tell me what – tell her what she did wrong. Cohn serves up a strike, three and one. Kind of same thing like the, the balk in baseball. There's so many little subtle movements that are called box and – you know, again, a coach will say, look, can you explain him? Because I didn't see it. Of course, that's also a coach's subtle way of saying, I don't think he's blocked. <laughs> You're just making stuff up. But can you tell him the new rule that you made up? Diamond helps Cohn now. Fouled one back, three and two. Chopper. Cohn's got a glove on it. Two way. Nicely done. You got to end up with your pitching motion in a position to field the ball. And Cone was right there, and just that was just kind of a lollipop. There it was just a matter of waiting on it to come down, and good fielding position and two away. Filling game steps into the box, swings at the first pitch. It's popped up, tough spot, and no one was there to catch it. Right in the middle of center and second base, he had about four players coming into that, no one communicating. Yeah, now again, to me, this is the center fielder's ball. All outfielders overrule all infielders. And you see the center fielder kind of kind of hesitating like she was afraid that the shortstop was going to come over. Call them off. Just start yelling, me, 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 me. And then if they crash into each other, then as a coach, I know who to yell at because center fielder overrules all infielders. You got to come get that ball. You, you know, if there was a ball that was going to land on second base, if the center fielder thought she could get it, she needs to come get it. Now, much like the last game, I'm going to score that a hit because you really, you know, there was no air on the play per se. A one and one the count to Schmidt. She came in relief pitching in the last game. Swings and misses, one and two the count. Off speed shot foul. The Maple Leafs back in the first game had two doubles, but still weren't able to score. Van Scooter led the game off with a double, but was doubled off. Line drive to Harweger, got caught up at two for the double play. One of the things I just noticed, and you know, you would think as a trained paid observer that I would have noticed this earlier, but. On their helmets, they have batting or they have helmet awards. Like you, you see football a lot of times where you'll see football players with that they uh, give them out. I like that. I mean, again, I, you know, you could maybe a great defensive play, you get a helmet sticker. You know, maybe you, again, run the, the bases really particularly well or smartly, helmet sticker. Maybe you have a great at bat, helmet sticker. Schmidt's got a lot of stickers. And a nice off speed from Cone. Schmidt goes down swinging. So another runner left on base for Goshen. And Marion hangs another zero on the board. Still waiting? You could have been seen by an orthopedic specialist at Ortho Indy Urgent Care. Avoid the wait, cost, and drama of the ER. Ortho Indy Urgent Care. Orthopedic care without the drama. Find a location near you. Still waiting? You could have been seen by an orthopedic specialist at Ortho Indy Urgent Care. Avoid the wait, cost, and drama of the ER. 
Ortho Indy Urgent Care. Orthopedic care without the drama. Find a location near you. Pepsi's always had great taste. Today, try great taste with zero sugar. This is the Pepsi with zero compromises. This is Pepsi Zero Sugar. It's a 1-0 lead for the Marion Knights, who tomorrow are going to take the trip up north to Goshen. A four-game series, two here in Indy, two in Goshen. The doubleheader set for tomorrow, rescheduled from March 18th and March 11th. So these conference opponents going at each other four straight games in two days. They're going to get pretty familiar with each other as Hoffman takes a first pitch strike. Well, to put it mildly, it's been an interesting spring uh, weather-wise. A lot of games rained out and some maybe even snowed out. And you just got to get these conference games in. Hoffman pokes one right over the head of the shortstop and it's going to fall in for a base hit. Gibson just not able to make a play on it. That ball just right off the end of the bat. She didn't get great uh, contact on it, but enough to let it drop there. And the freshman continues a hot day. She was two for three in the first game. And reached, I think, on a hit by pitch. So, you know, again, 75% or 750 on base percentage. And she takes off her second, sliding in. So runner on second for Lily Went at the plate. Hoffman now 14 of 14 on stolen bases. You know, Kelsey, one of the things I did notice when I was looking at the stats is that Marion doesn't run a lot, but when they run, they, they're successful. I mean, they have people who are 25 of 26, 3 of 3, 13 and a 13, 6 out of 7, 3 out of 4. When they run, they're successful. And it's Harweger who leads the team. 25 of 26 coming into game one. She definitely added to that earlier today. Yeah, after this pitch here, I'll, I'll, I'll run down real quickly. Basically the first 10. And it's 25 of 26, 1 of 2, 3 of 3, 13 of 13. Now 14 of 14, 3 of 3, 6 of 7, 1 of 1, 2 of, two out of 4, and 3 out of 4, and a 4 out of 5. So... They seldom, if ever, find themselves out on the base pass. Hoffman, ground ball, bobbled, and she's going to be safe. Runners on first and third for Marion, nobody out. And that right there is good base running. Again, she's got the play. The ball is behind her. So once she realizes that, that ball is going to go behind her, there's no way you're going to get her at third. So just take off. I see a lot of kids that will hesitate on that, not her. She's, she's a smart player. The second she realized the ball was going to be behind her, away she went. And with a couple wild pitches already, it's nice to be 60 feet away. And went. We'll take the base at second as Caroline, Caroline Root steps into the box for the first time today. Now catching in game number two. And an opportunity to score some runs. Two in scoring position for Root. Good eye, good patience there. Now she's come into the ball game or, or the series, batting a buck 88. So you could argue that she's due for a hit. Bring no count for Root, batting eighth in this lineup. Coach Fleming going to do the universal take sign: turn around and walk away from the hitter. That means don't swing. That one just catching a piece of the inside corner. Now, this is just something that when I coached hitters, and I mean, if you're not, because I look out there and Caroline Roop's all the way down on the knob of the bat. That makes the bat longer and they're so therefore slower through the zone. Until a kid gets out of a slump, I would want him to choke up a little bit, shorten the bat, shorten the bat path, make contact, and you'd be surprised how many balls will fall in for you. 
Well, Barrows worked her way back to a full count, but that's ball four to Roop. She'll take the walk and load the bases for Anna Pritchett. Well, nice job by Caroline Roop of working the walk and getting the bases loaded here. Pritchett, not your typical nine hole. She's batting 351 coming into the, the series. Nobody out, got to be careful, freeze on the line drive. F-O-L-D, fold, That's all, that was our word. We would just say fold, fold, and that meant freeze on a line drive. And then if you got picked off on a line drive, then I would want to beat you to death. Because <laughs> <laughs> it'd be like, didn't I just tell you that? That was Wilson, the catcher, taking a second to talk with her pitcher. But 2-0, oh. hitters Wilson. count. Wilson does a good job there of holding that pitch there, letting the umpire take a good long look at it. It was outside, and you're right. This is where you want to unload. This is a hitter's count. See it, bust it. Pritchett takes the strike. And that's fine. If you don't like that pitch, maybe it was low. Maybe she's more of a mid-thigh to, to belt type hitter. A pie, three and one. Kaufman at third, went at second. Roop sitting on first. Nowhere to put her, so Barrows has got to kind of give in here a little bit. Good pitch. You don't want to go middle, middle. But again, you've got to get something with a decent size of the plate or the umpire is not going to give it to you. Outfield playing in. Full count to Pritchett. Chops with a foul. Nice at bat here. Nice battle going on between Barros and Pritchett. Somebody's got to win. And it's Barros who's going to win the battle. Pritchett goes down swinging for a big first out. That is the fourth strikeout for Barros, so... She's kind of, uh, you know, again, either getting ahead of hitters and, and getting good pitches or you know, losing batters to walks and giving up hits. Hartweger takes a hack at it. Yeah, she had a Ruthian cut there. It's funny because sometimes she's a slap hitter, and then other times she stands up there and just tries to drive the ball. And that one she'll slap right to third. They'll get the force at home two away. She will reach on a fielder's choice. I think, honestly, with, with as good a hitter as she is and as fast as she is, I would just have her swing the bat and just, you know, let her let her hit ropes down the lines or in the gaps or over the fence. Knox takes one just foul. And then anything that doesn't, you know, get out of the ballpark, uh, just steal her. Knox had a single and came around to score in a wild pitch back in the first inning. Knox taking over the second base job this year. This is your first season fully healthy. She's been dealing with elbow and arm injuries in her first two seasons here at Marion. Yeah, it's not fun to play, you know, when, when you've got those nagging injuries and, you know, you, you just hope to get healthy so that you can be the kind of player that you know you're capable of being. So this Maple Leafs team trying to get out of the bases loaded jam with no damage. Knox, grounder over to the third, throw to first. And Goshen able to get out of a huge bases loaded, no out jam. They're still in arms to reach, trailing by one as we head to the top of the third. There's something that may surprise you about Marion University. It's not our Catholic faith, or our Franciscan values. It's not our 5,000 students or our diversity. It's not Marion's championship athletics or our Indianapolis location. 
It's that Marion is home to Indiana's only college of osteopathic medicine. Marion, Indy's Catholic University. Perfect day at the ball fields. Marion baseball also in on the action. They're facing Goshen this afternoon. You can see by the tiny scoreboard, it looks like they're up 10 to one. They also have a four game series against Bethel. First pitch, driven way foul and out of here. That's Wilson at the plate for Goshen. Macy Cohn's got to make a note of it though because she absolutely crushed that ball just way out in front of it. She pops this one up. And Pritchett is there for the out. That one was slightly different than the other one that dropped, but again, same deal. Center fielder's ball, much much easier for the center fielder to, to come in like that than for the shortstop to have her back to the infield and make that, you know, over the, the, the shoulder Willie Mays in the 54 series catch. Back to the top of the lineup for the Maple Leafs, it's Van Scooter. Out number two, Harweger with the blooper. So only a few pitches for Cone and two away for Goshen. Kenzie Richardson, the hitter, she was 0 for 3 in the first game with a strikeout. Actually, did he pinch it? Actually, Van Scooter's back at the plate. 0 and 1 the count. And hey, same thing. Harweger gets the snag. Not sure what exactly awarded Van Scooter to come back. Yes. Step into the ring. Had her hit again, so. Yep. So now there's there's still two outs. The same exact thing happened, and that brings up the number two hitter Richardson. I think again they're called an illegal pitch here. The home plate umpire took his mask off, as if it was a dead ball. So. Richardson fouls one back, two and one the count. Lined one to the shortstop back in the first inning. She had a single back of the fourth inning in game one. The lone hit, Olivia Stunkel, gave up in the 15 to zero win Marion had in game one of this double hatter. Three and one the count to Richardson. Puts a swing on it. That'll find some grass in the outfield. Richardson has her second single of the day. And you are right, I said she was 0 for three, but she did get that little base knock there that was scored a hit. I just forgot to color it with blue ink and that's my, my little color coding here. I missed it, so good catch. Batting in the three hole for the Golden Le Maple Leafs. Gibson. Pitch just missed up. Off speed pitch and top of the zone and the umpire did not think it got enough of it. Big swing and a miss. One and one. Gibson had one of those two doubles. Goshen had back in the first inning. She was left stranded at third. And this is where a pitcher and a catcher, you know, the battery as it's called, need to kind of communicate via signals to say, look, whatever pitch she hit for that double, we, <laughs> she's not going to see that pitch again. I promise you. One and a two. She goes down swinging, but a tough play is going to have to be made to first. Not in time. So Gibson reaches on the drop third strike. 
And that ball just really out of reach for Roop. Yeah, just went too far away from her. It still goes as a strikeout. I would call that a wild pitch since it was such a nasty pitch in the dirt. Um, so she reaches on the... Chopper over to Harwagger. She'll go to two. And what a snag by Knox to Abel to catch it and step on second base. So again, Goshen leaving runners on. Marion still with a one run lead. Step into the ring. At Indiana Members Credit Union, we're invested in more than just your finances. We're invested in your future, the future of your family, the well being of the community you live in, and in those who dream big. Until those dreams become a reality, any bank can give you a loan or open an account. At IMCU, we care about more than just dollars and cents. We care about doing things that make sense. And investing in you makes good sense to us. There's something that may surprise you about Marion University. It's not our Catholic faith or our Franciscan values. It's not our 5,000 students or our diversity. It's not Marion's championship athletics or our Indianapolis location. It's that Marion is home to Indiana's only college of osteopathic medicine. Marion, Indy's Catholic University. Leading off the, the Knights in the bottom of the third inning. Abby Madeer. She'll take ball one. Had a single back of the first inning. Paired that with a double and an RBI single back in game one. Scored twice. And just rockets this one into center field. Gets her team started here in the bottom of the third. Well, again, just a well-struck ball. It's going to stay in the yard. And Scooter does a nice job of just kind of drop-stepping, getting some depth, getting behind it, fielding it well, keeping her at first. But a good start for the Knights here in the third. Sierra Norman for Marion. Norman has logged every game at first base in her career. A steady part in this lineup in the four spot. Two pitches in the same spot, up and out, so a lot of respect being shown to Sierra Norman here. They don't want to give her anything middle cut because they're afraid it may end up in the baseball field. Cut off by the third baseman. She'll get the out at first. That was filling game. Nice job here again. You always coach your third baseman to, to go get everything you can. The shortstop's already moving toward third. She can handle, she can cover third. But go get everything you can because it's a shorter throw for you with all your momentum going to first than it is for the shortstop who's going away from first. That did advance Madeer to second as Meyer steps up to the plate. One of Barrow's four strikeout victims the first time through the lineup. Two and oh. Barrow's only with one loss on the season. On average, she doesn't give up more than one run in a game. Marion scored on a wild pitch back in the first inning. Coach Fleming may be giving her the green light there. He did not do the walk away thing. So if she finds something that she likes, her favorite pitch. Kind of looked like she was taken all the way there. But there's a couple kids. I, I coached a couple kids down through the years that I would let swing 3-0. Because honestly, I didn't want them to walk. They were too good a hitter. Three and one. Now we ball four. So two on, one out for the Knights. It's been a solid day for Hoffman. And that continued in game two. 
for Bunko's foul. Had a single back in the second inning. Yeah, she had a good idea there. Again, just looked at the defense, the alignment of the uh, corner infielders, and decided, you know what? I think I can outrun the ball here. If I can deaden the ball and make uh, somebody come and get it while they're taking steps to come get it, I'm taking steps to first. So just wasn't able to get the ball down. She swings on it. Almost caught by Gibson at short, but they'll still get the force at third. Tough play for Madeira on the base pass. Yeah, nothing she could do about it again. She's got to retreat because of the possible double play ball. And then once the ball drops, there's nothing you can do about it. The very rare eight to five. So two outs for Lily Went. Take strike one. Well, Van Scooter in center field has had a couple of really nice throws. That's another one there that was really up the left field line a little bit, but online and to go with the uh, put out she had at the plate in the first game. Lily went playing third base in this game. Good job by Wilson getting that ball. Her first year as a starter, this Marion program, she was DP in game one. Also occasionally catches. She chops one right back to Barros, who gets the third out of the inning. So Barros, Barros and Goshen working well defensively here in game two. They've held Marion to just one run. They'll grab the bats up next. This is the Pepsi for America's best barbecue. Worthy of 100 mile detours and 1,000 likes. Looks good. This is the Pepsi for mopping, dipping, and dousing. Whatever you're craving, this is the Pepsi for you. This is the Pepsi for serious fans and serious eats. This is the Pepsi for Sundays at the ballpark and days off at your favorite pizza joint. Right, Aaron? The best slice in New York. Whatever you're craving, this is the Pepsi for you. Marion University is like a home to me. Campus is where I made friends that I know will last a lifetime. Academics, sports, or arts, Marion's got something for you. Plus, downtown Indy is just 10 minutes away from campus. I'm a huge sports fan. Living in Indy, I've got the Knights, the Colts, and the Pacers. Applying was so fast and easy. I went to Marion for the education, but what I took away was the experience. Marion University offers an exceptional education and an unforgettable experience. Apply today for full scholarship consideration at marion.edu. Different ball game here in game two of our doubleheader. Marion still up by one over Goshen. The Knights took game one 15 to zero. But Jim, in this game, it's more of a pitching duel. And that's one out away. Cates fouling it off in fair territory. Harweger coming in to make the catch. And that's a perfect example of what we talked about earlier where the third baseman, that's just a, she's turning and twisting and and the left field, I mean, sorry, the shortstop has such a good angle. That is 100% the shortstop's ball. And then flip it on the other side, it would be the second baseman's ball over there in foul territory to the right side. And you see a lot of times where a second baseman or a shortstop will just let their first baseman or, or third baseman just twist in the wind and it's like, could you do your teammate a favor and call him off and take the better angle? One and one the count to Bianca Diamond. Grounded out to the pitcher back in the second inning. And you hear all the time, Kelsey, how baseball and softball are a game of inches, but they're also games of angles. And if you shoot pool, you understand angles. Swing and a miss for Diamond. Second most at bats on this team. Coming into game one. Batting 324. Playing and starting in every game this season for the Maple Leafs. Nice pitch there by Cone, just a good spot. You know, again, try to let the hitter get herself out. Grounder, Harweger will take it. She gets to first in time. First two outs recorded by Harweger. She's pretty good. Simply put, <laughs> does a great job of this three or four hopper here and just great momentum, fields the ball on her right foot, 
so it's already on her throwing side. Just everything about that right there was fundamentally sound. And Hardwicker this season and her, throughout her career, we've talked about her numbers. And actually, she struggled a little bit so far this year at shortstop, making a few uncharacteristic errors. Yeah, and some of that can be a little misleading. I mean, you, you, shortstop, you're going to get a lot of chances. And so, therefore, you're going to have more opportunities for the occasional error. I have not seen her play every game, but the games I have seen her play, she's been very solid. I, I realized a long time ago that I'm a better coach when I have better players. And uh, <laughs> if you had nine our wingers there, you'd, you'd be in good shape. Yeah. Bunting foul is still in the game. She had that shallow pop-up pop back in the second inning and fell right in between four Marion Knights. Takes it to the right side. Richardson is there. Excuse me, Knox is there. And that'll be a one, quick one, two, three inning for Marion. So far, shutting out this Goshen offense. They'll grab the bats as we head to the bottom of the fourth. Still waiting? You could have been seen by an orthopedic specialist at Ortho Indy Urgent Care. Avoid the wait, cost, and drama of the ER. Ortho Indy Urgent Care. Orthopedic care without the drama. Find a location near you. Still waiting? You could have been seen by an orthopedic specialist at Ortho Indy Urgent Care. Avoid the wait, cost, and drama of the ER. Ortho Indy Urgent Care. Orthopedic care without the drama. Find a location near you. sugar. This is the Pepsi with zero compromises. This is Pepsi Zero Sugar. We saw a few wagging tails so far at this game. Beautiful day to get outside, watch some softball, baseball, even the spring football game taking place here at Marion. This beautiful Saturday in West Indianapolis. 8-9-1 due up for the Marion Knights. Caroline Roop with a one and one count. Had a walk back in the second inning. Campus, lo campus located basically within shouting distance of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. The last time we did a game here, there were cars practicing. You could hear them off in the distance. Root pokes one in the right field, but Cates is there to make the catch. One away. Exciting time. Before you know it, just about a month and a half away from the Indianapolis 500. Yeah, I saw an interview with Andrew Luck the other day, and, and Luck had made a comment. Uh, they asked him what he missed most about Indianapolis. He said the whole month of May. Not one specific thing, not the race necessarily, but he mentioned it all. I, meant, I, meant, I missed the parade. I missed the excitement. I missed going out there on a Tuesday or a Wednesday and watching practice. Um, obviously, it's what this city is famous for. Uh, there's a few other things, but Indianapolis Motor Speedway was probably number one. A whole month to celebrate. One of the greatest spectacles in racing. And Marion, just a stone throw away from it. Beautiful campus, hidden back here off of Cold Springs, Cold Springs Road, between 30th and 38th Street. Anna Pritchett looks at a ball, two and one. Slow chopper. First baseman's going to go get it. Nobody covering first. And Pritchett's going to take second. So you score that a hit and an error. And again, this is one of those deals where when I coached, I used to tell kids, don't throw the ball around. Where are you throwing at? First of all, she's probably going to beat it out anyway, right? Second of all, there was no one there. Stop throwing the ball around. That's an E3. Perfectly placed in between the pitcher and the first baseman. 
So now a runner on second. Back to the top of the order, Harweger stepping up with the runner in scoring position. She squares around a bunt, pulls back for ball one. Well, Kara, our barrel's reared back and unloaded on that one. That one really popped the glove. That might have been a frustration pitch where it's like, come on, ladies, I need some help here. I, I, I can live with a runner at first. Don't put her in scoring position. She delivers a strike. One of the top pitchers in this conference. She's racked up eight wins so far this season. Ball outside. Well, I like this matchup. I mean, again, Barros is really attacking the hitter and, and with respect, of course, but and then you got Harweger who can do just about anything. Perfectly placed bunt by Harweger. No chance of getting her. Harweger had designs of maybe going to second as no one was covering second base. That ball stopping when she laid it down. Straight base hit here, and then she looks over. She sees that the second baseman is standing on first. The shortstop's at third. No one's at second. She decided to stay. So that'll bring up Knox. As Harweger adds a stolen base to her tally. Again, back to that play, that's one where the center fielder probably needs to come in once she sees square that she needs to come in and cover second because you're rotating everybody else away from second. Knox puts one into play. Flies it out to right field and tagging is Pritchett. She'll score easily. And Marion's back on the board. 2-0 lead over Goshen. Well, the fly ball good enough for a sacrifice fly and an RBI. And you're going to see it here, the ball driven. Immediately the runner on third goes back to tag. It's a relatively short uh, part of the outfield. You see her go back. That's good, really good base running. Got her shoulders open to the field, sees it all. And honestly, just not a good throw necessarily from Kate and Wright. It helps with some speedy base runners. On for Marion. Right up the middle. Stopped by Gibson, but still that's going to be good enough for a base hit RBI for Madeer. Well, that's the stuff that we saw a lot of in the first game where, again, just, just a little bu bunch of base hits. You string a bunch of hits together. And all of a sudden you get a run. Marion strung together countless Base hits back of the fourth inning of game one. They scored 11 runs in that lone inning. Madeer one of two on stolen bases coming into the series. Norman right over to shortstop and Gibson will put an end to the run. But Marion still able to plate two in a big bottom of the fourth inning. They hold a 3-0 lead as we head to the top of the fifth. At Indiana Members Credit Union, we're invested in more than just your finances. We're invested in your future, the future of your family, the well-being of the community you live in, and in those who dream big. Until those dreams become a reality, any bank can give you a loan or open an account. At IMCU, we care about more than just dollars and cents. We care about doing things that make sense, and investing in you makes good sense to us. Heading to the top of the fifth inning, Marion with a three to nothing lead over Goshen here on the ISC Network. We've got a great crew working a double header this afternoon. Vince Morales, our director. Carlos on replay, we got Matt on graphics. We have four cameras out here today doing a phenomenal job of catching the action. We got Ian, Elijah, Richard, and Daniel doing a phenomenal job in their coverage this afternoon as well as my partner, Jim Leisure. Calling this double header here at Marion. Big swing on the first pitch, but it's going foul. 
off the bat of Schmidt as 8-9-1 due up for the Maple Leafs. Yeah, and that camera work's not easy stuff. I mean, you really got to focus on your job. You can't really watch the game. You have to have your position and your angle and just stay with it. And, and it's tough sometimes if you start watching the game uh, pretty soon from your camera, we're getting just nice shots of the outfield grass and not, not to play. Well, so far today, Goshen has not been able to play to run here in Indianapolis. Some good pitching in both games for the Knights. Between Stunkel and then the freshman today, Macy Coates. Schmidt gets a good piece of this one. Left center field at the wall to make the catch. That's Hoffman out in left field. Really nice job, great drop step, good angle. Again, hopefully you're getting some communication from the center fielder to let you know, hey, track, 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 meaning you're about to hit the warning track. And then, of course, as an outfielder, the last thing you want to hear is fence, 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 because that means you're about to crash into it. She had about a step left in yep, her. Yep, yep. And, you know, we, we, we practiced that stuff. You know, we would have a coach stand out about shortstop and just hit little tweeners between the, the left fielder and the shortstop and force them to communicate. You know, little 10-minute segment, we'd have two center fielders, one working with the left fielder, one working with the right fielder, and just hitting a lot of balls and just getting a bunch of reps. Talk, talk, talk. Figure this out. We're not docking the space shuttle. We're just playing softball. One and two, the count to Wilson. Blue out to center back in the third. That communication would have paid off earlier in this game. Yeah, again, and we, and, and we used to have a, a drill for that as well. We used to put a pitching machine basically over here between home plate and third base. And again, third baseman, shortstop, left fielder, tweener, right? Then we'd move the machine and we'd have another shortstop hop in and we'd go to center and another tweener. And then you see the strikeout and the step in, nice job. The off-speed pitch from Cone got Wilson down swinging. Through to first for the second out. But, you know, so they make different types of baseballs and softballs. Obviously, they get the regular ones. And then they have these, these they're like poly balls where they're made of cloth or whatever. And they don't fly as far. So you would you would mix in real balls with poly balls as she lines out to the shortstop for the third inning. And, again, give them all different looks, and they all had to figure it out. It was, and, again, you practice it, you get better at it. Well, practice makes perfect, and that was a perfect inning for the Marion Knights. Three up, three down. We'll have another opportunity for some more offense in the bottom of the league. Does your school offer high quality education? Does it offer virtual or hybrid options? Marion University Preparatory School educates students in a safe, faith-based environment focused on college and career exploration. Here at Marion University Preparatory School, we empower parents and help students to master what they love and learn as they live. We are now enrolling students in grades six through nine this fall. Full financial aid packages are still available. Act now to make MU Prep your school for 2022. Fans in the stands to watch this doubleheader here, Marion. Nine hits for the Knights and a 3-0 lead over Goshen. Cameron Barrows still in the circle for the Maple Leafs. She's put together a pretty impressive performance. Despite the three runs on the board, has really silenced a hot offense in game one. Yeah, she, you know, she had three strikeouts in the first inning and did a nice job of of getting through that. And again, the, the runs that she's given up have just been earned, you know, by, by uh, the Marion hitters getting, you know, enough hits to string them along, get them on, get them over, get them in, you know. Uh, she has not pitched poorly. Meyer will start things off for Marion. Coming into this game, Barrows had the third best ERA in the Crossroads League. 1.97. Top pitcher, though, and that belongs to Livia Stunkel, who we saw in game one. Meyer pokes it out. Van Scooter tracks it down for the first out. A little inside out swing from the left hander here. Again, that ball's tailing away from Van Scooter in center, but she has a, a great beat on it. Got those sunglasses on. This is a tough sun field. Uh, really, honestly, this is one of the few fields where sometimes it's right fields directly in the sun. Of course, it, some of it has to do with the hour of the day as well. But 
all three outfielders wearing sunglasses, and uh, basically all three of them need it. Squaring around to bunt is Hoffman. That one rolls foul. Marion is the top hitting team in this conference. They have a team batting average of 361. Goshen, they belong in the bottom half. As a team, they hit 293. And obviously that's the difference between, you know, about seven or eight different wins, you know, and it is so hard to defend and pitch to somebody who gets a base hit almost four times out of ten. Hard hit right into the gap. Diamond was able to track it down. And Hoffman will settle for a single off that hit. Oh, she hit the inside corner of that first base bag, and she was looking. Like I said, Bianca Diamond does a nice job of getting to it quickly and keeping her off second base. You know, you talk about, you know, when, when you're batting as a team, 364, add a couple walks in there, add a hit by pitch, and, you know, my gosh, it, it's hard to keep you off the scoreboard. Going on the pitch. That's another stolen base for Hoffman. So a runner on second as Lily Went took that first pitch for a ball. Yeah, obviously just kind of sacrificing one for the team. She had no intentions of bunting it. Hoffman now, well, came into it 13 thir out of 13. This That was 14 out of 14. Unless she got one in the first game, I, I honestly can't remember. That first game, there were just <laughs> blue... Blue jersey people running everywhere. Left and right. Yeah. She probably did. 3 0 the count. Marion with an opportunity to add to their three run lead here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Marion didn't have a chance to bat in the bottom of the fifth inning last game. They took care of business and ended it. Went will take the walk. And the Knights have runners on first and second. And there's that aforementioned uh, base on balls that can lead to runs here. We got Roop, first time up, got a nice at bat, worked a walk, and last time hit a rope out to, to right field. So for a young lady who doesn't get to play a ton, she's, she's seeing the ball pretty well. And, you know, that's really what it is at times. I mean, you're just seeing it, and, and sometimes you're not seeing it. Maybe you're moving your head a little bit in your, in, in your swing. But when you're seeing it, man, this is a fun game to play. That one inside, 2-0. And, oh. and I was just going to say, Wilson probably going to take a time to settle Barros down here. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm sure what she's going to say is like, look, we've already got one out. We're pitching to 8-9 and nine here. Okay, now again, I just said that, that Roof's seeing the ball pretty well, so she's probably not your typical 8-hitter, but... She is going to go out and say, look, go back to doing what we were doing earlier. Uh, you know, again, sarcastically, I used to tell people, you know, Babe Ruth is dead. Babe Ruth never, never batted eighth or ninth. Stop pitching him like they're Babe Ruth. You know, just, just attack the hitter. She'll take a strike. Two and one the count. Big swing from Roop. Barros puts one past her, two and two. Yeah, just go, just attack the hitter here. And if you're Roop, I'm again, I would like to see her choke up just a little bit. Looks like maybe she did about a half inch or so. Shortens the bat, shortens the path. And got her swinging. Barros comes back to get the strikeout. And Wilson, of course, looks at her like, okay, any questions? Great. Scott Fleming looks to make a switch. Probably wants a little bit bigger of a bat than Pritchett, who was due up. Yeah, I mean, you got an opportunity here with uh, certainly one runner in scoring position, so you're going to want to bring in somebody that's less of a slap hitter and more, like you said, of a contact 
put the ball in play. So he'll bring in Mackenzie Dalton. We saw her back in game one. Also serving as a pinch hitter and came into the game in the final inning. And I would imagine Anna Pritchett will re-enter defensively. So two out opportunity for Mackenzie Dalton. Good pitch. Great pitch for the pitcher and not a good pitch for a hitter. So don't swing at it. Dalton looks at the first two strikes. Two really good spots there by Barrows. And again, now this is what I always told hitters again. If you don't like the pitch, don't swing at it. The only time you have to swing is when there's two strikes. Now you got to concede a little bit, but man, don't, don't swing at bad pitches. If you don't like them, don't swing at them. Dalton swings and fouls it. So again, the way she hit it was you know, the opposite way. She's a little bit behind the pitch. So choke up, speed everything up a little bit, shorten it. Take your hands right to the ball. Two outs, runners are moving on contact. Dalton lays off the high heat, two and two. Choked up just a little bit. And got her on the outside corner. Barros settles down and gets the final out. Marion strands two runners. The Maple Leafs, though, they got some work to do now as we head to the top of six. could have been seen by an orthopedic specialist at Ortho Indy Urgent Care. Avoid the wait, cost, and drama of the ER. Ortho Indy Urgent Care. Orthopedic care without the drama. Find a location near you. Marion still holding on to a 3-0 lead in game two of our doubleheader against Goshen. Well, you know, Kelsey, in these games, uh, you know, get that feeling where if you're ever going to do it, you're going to do it now. You know, uh, Goshen's got two, three, four, and five due up. And in a three-run ball game, this is where you need to put something on the board. Ideally, it'd be a nice crooked number, two, three. But I'm sure that Coach would take one at this point. Two opportunities left for Goshen to put some runs on the board. They haven't been able to play a runner so far today. Richardson at the plate, like you mentioned, two, three, four, due up. She takes it to the right side. And Knox is there for the first out. Defense going to work here for Marion in this game. Yeah, you know, I was just getting ready to say that too. You, you wonder how many runs are saved just by, by really good defensive plays. This is a very well-constructed uh, all-around softball team. They hit the cover off of it, but they also pick it pretty good, too. Well, you mentioned they saved that big run of the first inning, and Scooter led things off with a double. And right here, Gibson starts things off with a single. But even right there, that, that, that's a ball that maybe sometimes gets to the wall for a double. Madeer, the right fielder, does a fantastic job of just getting to it and limiting the damage. Yeah, I'm back at the first inning. 
Harweger caught the line drive, got the double play of Van Scooter at second. That saved a runner from scoring as it was Gibson who had the double. So Gibson today, one for three, a double and a single as Catanachi steps up to the plate. Egg swing and a miss, one and one. And Gibson is five of five on stolen bases. She's a tall kid, so obviously probably has a long stride and and you do have a backup catcher here, so if you're ever gonna send somebody, maybe this is it. Two one is a good pitch to steal on. So the pitcher doesn't want to drop to three and one. She's probably gonna throw something. She's not gonna pitch out here and go to three and one. Pops it up. Knox dropping back. Gets the second out. Two away. Basically, just repeat myself. I think this is a decent opportunity to try to steal a base here. Well, we saw a few aggressive base running decisions in game one. Yeah, and they not didn't pay off and in their favor. And they yeah, and sometimes you get a little gun shy. But see, my thing is now they've gone on ahead and pinch hit here, so they're probably not going to do it. I think the pinch hitter is number one. Ella, Ella McLeod, McLeod yeah. steps in to pinch hit for Cates. Yeah, so you're probably not going to do it. But, but the, the, the logic of maybe doing it with the other hitter is if you do get thrown out, then you still lead off the next inning with the five ball. But if you're successful, now you have a runner on second base, pretty good hitter, base hit scores a run. So to me, the risk and reward is what it is, is what it is. One and one the count to McLeod. Her first step out of the afternoon. McLeod hitting 267. We've seen plenty of action this year, starting 26 games. This one to Harweger. She'll take it to first, and that will retire the side. The defense of Marion showing out here in game two as they're holding on to their three run lead. Still waiting? You could have been seen by an orthopedic specialist at Ortho Indy Urgent Care. Avoid the weight, cost, and drama of the ER. Ortho Indy Urgent Care. Orthopedic care without the drama. Find a location near you. sugar. This is the Pepsi with zero compromises. This is Pepsi Zero Sugar. Head coach Fel Fleming looking for two wins on this Saturday afternoon to add to their conference total. Marion right now sitting at second in the Crossroads League 16 in five conference record. Check to standings after game one. Indiana Wesleyan just ahead of them coming into Saturday afternoon. And a couple of weeks ago, we had an opportunity to talk to Coach Fleming. He talked about how one of the things that his team has not done particularly well is the second game of a doubleheader. Um, you know, they, they've, they've had big games just like the first one here. And then, you know, they played well in this one. But uh, you're going to look back at some of those second games that you lost and you're going to wish you had him toward the end. Harweger lines out to third. Yeah, so far this season, five of this team's seven losses have come in game two of those doubleheaders. Yep. yep, and again, you look back later on in, in, in the conference tournament when they throw out the seeding, and you're like, you know, if we get one there and we get one there, we're the two seed instead of the three. Knox puts it in play. Richardson gets the second out. Two quick outs for Barros and the Maple Leafs. You hear a lot of coaches talking in sports, whether it's baseball, basketball, football. You, the losses stay with you longer than the wins. You know, the wins are nice and you celebrate them, but then you get back to work. It's the losses that you're still thinking about six weeks later. This is a Marion team. That came away with 52 wins last season. 
52 and nine record, made it to the World Series. Popping it up, deep right field, tracking it down. Is Kate down right field and a one, two, three inning for Goshen. They'll have to grab the bats. They're down to their final three outs here in game number two. There's something that may surprise you about Marion University. It's not our Catholic faith or our Franciscan values. It's not our 5,000 students or our diversity. It's not Marion's championship athletics or our Indianapolis location. It's that Marion is home to Indiana's only college of osteopathic medicine. Marion, Indy's Catholic University. Well, Marion has an opportunity to end it here as the Knights have a 3-0 lead heading to the top of the seventh inning. Goshen with some work to do if they want to keep this game alive. Marion looking for back-to-back -back shutout wins over their conference opponent. It's been a pretty dominant performance from start to finish from Marion. Well, Macy Cohn especially, too. She's done a fantastic job, obviously, pitching the shutout. Uh, not a four or five hitter, I guess, as I look quickly through the scoreboard here, or through the scorebook. Nobody's warming up. It's her game. Bianca Diamond leading things off for the Maple Leafs. Eight, excuse me, six, seven, eight. Due up to start the inning. Fouls to the right side. Marion played at 15 runs back in game one. But Cameron Barros has held the best offense in the Crossroads League to just three runs this afternoon. Calling that ball for the first out. Norman gets the catch. One away. Really like the communication there. Again, used to coach our kids and say, look, don't be shy. You know, let everybody in the building know. If you want it, call it and then go get it. Dylan Game steps up to the plate. Had a single back in the second, one for two on the day. Like I mentioned, these two teams will face off twice tomorrow. But it's Goshen who will have home field advantage as Marion will head up north for two more conference matchups. But and if Marion can take care of business, that's a big 4-0 stretch in conference play. And you mentioned that the weather that we've had here in, in, in Indiana the last couple weeks necessitated that. You're going to get to a point, too, toward the end of the year where any non-conference games, you may have to scratch those. Ellen game hit by pitch. So she'll take off to first. And yeah, we had rain all week here in Indianapolis. I was a little concerned coming into the game how this field would hold up. They didn't tarp it. Coming out here, looking gorgeous out here. Well, shout out to the field crew and the staff for getting this field ready. Beautiful 67 degrees. Hard hit right into the gap. What a shot off the bat of Schmidt. Rounding second and coming to third is filling game. Schmidt's got a stand-up double. And Goshen's not done yet. Well, just an excellent drive in the left center field. Nobody had a shot at that ball. Abby Hoffman, Anna Pritchett, and anybody, frankly. And a good, smart base running here. You don't want to take a chance on an out at the plate. You're going to go ahead and bat, you know, second and third, nobody out. I'm sorry, one out. Yeah, Hoffman was playing pretty far in. Yeah. No angle she took on that. She'd be able to catch. So it looks like a pinch hitter is going to be coming in for the Maple Leafs. Now for the Maple Leafs 18, As the tying run steps up to the plate, it's going to be Jasmine Smith. Batting 364 in the year in her 11 at-bats. Has started one game for Goshen so far. Remember, you do have first base open, and I'm not saying, you know, to intentionally walk her, but, you know, there is that, that, that deal where you just try to stay away from her, and if she wants to get herself out, she can. But if you have to walk her, you walk her, and you set up double plays, and you set up forces. We'll see how the 
choose to approach it. That was a good start. Cone catches the outside corner. Smith, the sophomore from Santa Clarita, California. Fouls him back, 0-2. Macy Cone obviously getting exactly what she wanted out of those first two pitches. We'll see what she does here. Again, she has in her entire arsenal off speed, stuff out of the zone, stuff close to the zone. Able to get a piece of the off speed. Goshen needs to score three runs right here in order to force a bottom of the seventh inning. Marion looking to end early here. Swung on, somehow stayed in play. Gets the out at first, a throw home not in time. And the Maple Leafs are on the board for the first time today. Well, Jasper Smith with a little RBI there, even on the uh, two to three here. Good job of base running at third base. Throw was up, no shot at all. You had a shot, maybe, a, a very slim chance of maybe getting her if the throw was low, but it was not. So the swinging bunt got the RBI, the job done, but two away. And Scooter looks at a first pitch strike. If you're Goshen, this is who you want at the plate in this situation. Run around third. Goshen trailing three to one. Ball in the dirt. Nice shot by Root. Keeps it out in front. Really good job there. Again, you don't want to give up a run here. And you always want to keep competing. And, you know, again, you just coach that. You're going to slide out on your knee uh, guards, your shin and guards. And Scooter puts a swing on it deep into right field. One bounces off the fence. And an RBI double for Van Scooter. Here comes Goshen. Well, certainly better late than never, Kelsey. If you're going to get runs, you see that ball just car carries over the right fielder's head. Now, again, Macy Cohn, you know, in, in a situation, I'm sure this is Coach Fleming is saying, hey, listen, we got to battle out of this thing. We're going to need you at some point in the tournament. First pitch strike to Richardson. That was the second double of the day for Van Scooter. Richardson does have a hit today, one of three in this second game. Big swing and a miss. Cone ahead of the count. Goshen has played in two runs in the top of the seventh inning, their first two runs all afternoon. The 0-2 swing and a miss. Cone puts an end to it. Back-to-back -back wins for Marion. Got her swinging on the outside pitch. And Cone ends the rally from Goshen to get their second win of the day. Jim, we saw a ton of offense in game one, a close game in game two, but it was Marion who ends up on top this afternoon. Well, Coach Slim has got to be pleased again. He's struggled. They have struggled to get that second win of the doubleheaders all year long. They pick up one here, albeit a little bit closer probably than he wanted it to be there at the end, but again, I think it's a good opportunity for his kids, especially Macy Cohn, to get in a tough spot and then fight back out of it, and that's what she did. Well, beautiful day for softball here in Indianapolis. For our whole crew here at ISC Network, he's Jim Leisure, I'm Kelsey Casper, saying so long for Indianapolis. It's Marion who comes out on top over Goshen in their doubleheader this day. At Indiana Members Credit Union, we're invested in more than just your finances. We're invested in your future the future of your family, the well-being of the community you live in, and in those who dream big. Until those dreams become a reality, any bank can give you a loan or open an account. At IMCU, we care about more than just dollars and cents. We care about doing things that make sense, and investing in you makes good sense